Amen. Let's go to the Word. Praise God. Um, I, this is for me. This may not. Uh, this I'm going to tell y'all what God told me. Amen. Preferably you can get something from it. Amen. So, so the name of our message is, uh, I finally see why I'm broke. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. God, God showed me in the last couple of weeks, he was like, you know, there was a picture that we had up on the other day. It was a picture with me, Warren Buffett, and probably about um, 30 other white males. I think it was one other black male, Tony Knuckles was in the building. And then we probably had, you know, one or two guys that identified as something other than European. I don't know what that was. <laughs> Amen. But uh, we were all in the room. And so I had a picture up. It's a group of kids that came in from Texas and I was training and I was showing them the picture. You know, what was crazy was the day I was in that room, you know, I didn't really know why I was in the room. Right. And I prayed for clarity. And, you know, we serve a God who's so good that he can't necessarily tell us everything he wants for us immediately. It would overwhelm us. Praise God. Come on, somebody. Amen. If God just showed you how he was just going to bless you, you'd pass out. It's just too much. Amen. And so what God does is he does it in doses. Right. So when I was with these gentlemen, you know, God showed me a couple things. But then later he showed me the reason why I had you in the room with billionaires, is because I want you to be one. Praise God. Amen. Now, I didn't, it didn't make sense to me because I'm like, OK, God, I ain't really into that. Like I'm from Detroit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like. I'm from, I'm from a normal working class. Like, I don't necessarily need to be no billionaire. And he was like, oh, no, 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 you do. You do. You do. And I'm like, God, I'm trying to tell you, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to tell you that I only need this much. Well, I, I want to show you all this. Go to the next slide. Watch what God showed me in a, in a thread. And threads just came out. Watch what God showed me. God says, if God were to answer all your prayers, would it change the world or just yours? Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. And so God said, no, you don't need to be a billionaire for what you're trying to do. <laughs> but the only thing you're looking at is for you and yours. Uh, somebody missed what I said. I want to I help somebody. Amen. Amen. Because some of you are in the funk and some of you are not where you want to be in life. And you don't even realize that the reason why you're not where you want to be is because you're only thinking about you. For real, that's why you're depressed right now. That's why you like not where you're supposed to be in life. That's why you're not excited. That's why there's a part of your life where you keep wondering, like, something's missing. I, I don't feel right. Things ain't going right. What's missing is you only thinking about you. And the part that's missing is when you start thinking about others. All right, I'm going to say that one more time because I can tell some of y'all you still don't got it. Like, you don't understand that the need, the need to be on drugs or to need to be in relationships you ain't got no business in, the, the need to be on alcohol, like the need to be doing stuff you ain't got no business doing, you're wondering like, God, why can't I fill this void? Because that void wasn't meant to be filled for you by you. If you was be looking out for others, you wouldn't even be on that, but you need to do this because the time that you smoking is the time you're supposed to be helping somebody, but you wonder like, what's going wrong? What's going wrong is you are thinking about you and God does not have the capacity just for you to be thinking about you. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say one more time then. If God were to answer all your prayers, would it change the world or just yours? Hallelujah, praise God, amen, amen. So God showed me this and God said to me this week, this is not for you, this is me. I just wanna preach the sermon he gave to me to you, amen, hallelujah, amen. And God said two things. He said, you lazy and you timid. And I was like, oh, lazy? <laughs> I said like, the lazy boy hit me first. I'm like, lazy? I don't know if I know I'm timid, but I ain't necessarily lazy, he said, you lazy. Amen. So as you're listening to my sermon that God gave to me, amen, hopefully you can get something out of it. Amen. Let's go to the next slide. Hopefully you can get something out of it. So, so there is a scripture in Proverbs 14, 23 that said, work brings profit. Praise God. You know what's so crazy? Like, this is why we can't be lazy. And, you know, and a part of being lazy in, a, in a, a religion, like, is you start doing like this group stuff where everybody got to follow the same thing. And so everybody following the same thing. And people ain't thinking outside of the same. So when I first joined the church and we was, they was, they, like, I don't know how I read this and missed this. Because we were so religious and we were so focused on the, the, the dogma of the, and the doctrine of the church 
that I wasn't even looking at scriptures practically. Like, I was reading Proverbs more than I was reading any book, and I never caught billionaire. And now when I'm reading, I see billionaire already in it. God said, you lazy. Watch this. Work brings profit. Look, guys, you can't make profit spiritual. Profit is money. You can't make it more than what, this is what the scripture's saying. Work brings profit. So for those of you who got a job, when you go to work, they give you a certain amount of money. God is saying that if you want to see profit, you don't see profit through prayer. Okay, I'm by myself now. You don't, you don't pray to get profit. You work to get profit. Praise God. I'm talking to somebody. Amen. And I'm telling you, God was like, son, when I say you lazy, I'm not talking about industrial lazy. I'm not talking about that. You from the city. You know how to work with your hands. What I have a problem with is you lazy when it comes to your mind. When you think about making money, this is all you think about. I need you to start. Billions not coming from this. Billions is coming from this. Why don't you have an app already? If you're seeing how much money the world is making through an app, why don't you have an app yet? Why? Because I'm lazy. Meaning what? That I only like to do what I like to do. Praise God. God said you lazy. Now, you ain't lazy when it comes to what you do, but you lazy when it comes to what I'm asking you to do. Like, you like to do what you like to do, but you don't want to do what I want you to do. I mean, I came to church yesterday. It was boxes. The boxes all in the, you know, the, you know, somebody put the boxes in the back. Praise God. But my wife saw it and was like, look, if you can't close the and I'm like, man, I already know what she on. Like, I'm already, I feel her spirit. I already know what she on. She's like, you see those boxes? I'm like, you know I see those boxes. I'm in the car with you. You know I see the boxes, right? And she's like, well, you know if the door, if it ain't closed, they can't pick up the trash. And I was like, I know, but they come Thursday. I'm just being real. It's Friday. We can do it. <laughs> I said, but I already knew, like, don't say that because it's going to be a long weekend. Amen. And so I prayed. I prayed. I said, God, with the same energy that I have for people, I don't get tired when it comes to talking to people and praying with people and helping people, but when it comes to manual labor, I get a little tired. Whatever it is, whatever spirit it is that you give me when I'm talking to people, I need that spirit right now. Because I'm going to have to break, I'm going to have to take all the boxes out, which is going to be tiring, and then I got to break all the boxes down and then I got to put them in there right. That's a problem for me. Anytime, you have to do, anytime I have to do something right, that's a challenge for me. I just like to throw stuff in. I could tell by the way, the amount of garbage in there that I was going to have to properly place each box so I could get it to come down. Oh, somebody missed what I said. God says, when it comes to certain things, son, you're not lazy. But when it comes to paperwork, you lazy. You don't like to do paperwork, son. That's why you owe the IRS 500 grand. You could have gave that 500 grand to another institution, but because you lazy, let me tell y'all something. You can say what you want to say about Trump. I, I am so, I'm like, I, I'm so clear now on if you pay 775, 000, whatever it was, $750 for taxes, I'm like, yep, you, ain't, you weren't lazy. That take work. Like, do you understand to make the kind of money he make, but to be able to do what he did to get his taxes that low, that's work. God said, you hate doing paperwork, son. You love doing this kind of work, and I'm not mad at you, but these things you should have done, these things you should not have left undone. I'm not saying it to you. I'm saying it to me. God said, you lazy. And if you would work in the way I would tell you to work, you would bring what? Profits. Amen. You bring profits to the church, son. You bring profits of it. You bring profit, but profit comes from work. It don't come from praying. Now, there are things that come from praying, but it's not profits. You can't go to the gas station and pray over the gas tank. Lord, I pray right now for 30 gallons of gas that miraculously will come through this tank into my tank and it will somehow be on full when I leave, Lord. I pray these all, all these things I ask in Jesus' name, amen. Let me tell you something. If it don't work, it don't have nothing to do with your spirit. It don't have nothing to do with your faith. You don't have lack of faith. It just takes money. It takes money to go into whatever apparatus they have. It goes in, and then you could get as much gas as you paid for. Come on, I'm talking to somebody. 
But watch what the Bible says. But mere talk be, brings poverty. Why didn't they show me this when I was 17, 18? Why was we just focused on the second coming of Christ? I'm not mad at the second coming of Christ, but I joined the church when I was 16 years old. That's almost 40 some years ago. I'm still here. I'm not there yet. And guess what? I've come to realize something about this, this country. The less money you have, this is a different experience. The more money you have, it's a different experience. I try to explain to people, this don't, this, this don't, you can't pray for the lights to come on. Talk to Tamisha. There's a bill that comes with this. I remember there was a time we were like, I don't know, Jamie, give me the number, but some kind of way our toilets was messed up and they was running. We didn't even know they was running. What was that bill like, that water bill? Thousands. I promise I called as the pastor. We're a church. We don't know what happened to the water. <laughs> we didn't know it was running. In Jesus' name, they was like, praise God. Then if you didn't know it was running and you are Christians, then praise God, it's going to be seven grand and you need to get somebody to go out there and fix it. They never cut us a deal. I don't even remember asking for a payment plan. They just wanted their $7,000 to keep the room. Work brings profit. Mere talk brings poverty. And God's like, in some areas, you're doing a lot of talking. In some areas, you're working. But in some areas, you're doing paperwork, you're doing a lot of talking. Ideas that in front of the brain, you're doing a lot of talk. I'm telling y'all, this text is so bad now, I get aggravated when I hear grown people call me with ideas. I just, I, I'm like, hey, please, I'm about to hang up on you. I cannot afford to hear another idea. It ain't doing nothing for us. Now, maybe in my 30s, I could tolerate it for you. Once you hit 50, it's just the tolerance boy is gone. I don't know what happened. But with 50, it's just like, I'm about to leave this earth. I ain't got time to hear that. Let's go to the next one. Watch what the Bible says. This thing is real, y'all. Lazy people want much, but get little. It's in the Bible. Now, we can talk about fasting later. Pastor, you've never put us on a fasting regiment. Don't worry about it. I'm about to put you on a wealth one now. Praise God. Somebody say, is this a, uh, make sure you do, don't put words in my mouth. This is not a prosperity message. This is a wealth message. This is not about prosperity. I don't know when the last time you've been to Whole Foods. I went to Whole Foods. It cost me $200. I had a bag and a half. This ain't about prosperity. If you're going to eat fruits, nuts, and grains, you're going to pay for it. This is, a, this is not prosperity. This is wealth. Gas, I was in California. It was $7 a, a gallon. They didn't want to hear nothing about, listen to me very close, I want to make this clear. During COVID, the gas was $7 and something cents in California a gallon. They did not have a different pump for Christians. Oh, you're a Christian. Oh, it's $4 a gallon. <laughs> I ain't been to the grocery store yet where there's a Christian section. Oh, you eat, oh, you want fruits, nuts, and grains? Oh, you're a Christian. Oh, we don't. It's just less for you. It's the same. You sinning or you saved is all too expensive. Listen to me very closely. If we gonna tell our kids to stop eating fake food, ain't nobody going to McDonald's because they want to. It's, you can afford to pay for cheap. Well, whatever it is, it ain't even food. Whatever it is, it's cheap. And it's not real meat. It's not. The French fries, they already told us it was plastic. But you telling people to get on a health message. How? When I'm only making so much money a month. You telling kids, don't, don't eat Cheetos. They, I can afford hot Cheetos. And so here's what the Bible says. Lazy people want much but get little. But to those who... <laughs> oh, praise God. He didn't even just say work. Amen. He said work hard will prosper. This is a message of wealth. When Didi got diagnosed with MS, I could not afford to have cheap insurance. Let me tell you what somebody counseled me and told me. Before she switch over to yours, if she ever decides to quit her job, you need to have insurance before, because if you get it when she, they're not going to give it to you. So you got to pay them a year in advance before anything ever. I was paying Blue Cross and Blue Shield before I even needed it for her. 
And guess what happened? When she quit her job and came over to mine, they didn't ask no questions. They boom, why? We had the best of the best. When, because we had money, we was able to get the best physician. And I'm not God, and I don't know nothing, but I've got friends who I went to school with who had MS, and some of them have passed, and Diddy's still walking around. It, it wealth pays. Don't fool yourself. You go to court if you want to with a court-appointed court lawyer. You can go with one if you want to. <laughs> so you got a 20% chance of getting out. Pay for a good one and see what happens. I'm just saying, go in with Johnny Cochran and see what happens. You're not going to jail. <laughs> huh? Somebody told me, man, you think Kobe going to jail? Absolutely not. <laughs> it's not possible. Why? He brings too much wealth to the Lakers. It's not possible. They got good lawyers. I'm trying to tell you today that in heaven, money means absolutely nothing, but on earth, it means a whole lot. And as the people of God, God has made a way for us to get it without having to compromise. God said, yeah, your speaking going to bring a lot, but it ain't going to bring it all. You lazy. You just want to get on stage and talk. I'm going to need you to do some other stuff. I've given you gifts, not a gift. You're going to have to exercise all of them, and some of them are going to require paperwork, and I know you don't like paperwork. Let's go to the next one. This thing is so deep, y'all. It's right here in the Bible. Uh, lazy people are soon poor, quick. Not just poor, quick poor. That's it right there, soon poor. I didn't make this stuff up. It's in the Word. You acting like I recreated the Word. This is the Word. But I never saw this when I was in school. They never showed me this. They just tell, tell me Jesus Christ is coming, and I believe he is, but he may not come in my lifetime, so I got to steward my lifetime like he ain't coming. In my lifetime, I didn't say he wasn't coming. I have to assume that he's not coming in my lifetime, and I got to go get a GED, and I got to get a four-year degree, and I got to get a master's degree, and I got to get a PhD. I got to occupy until he comes. Not sit here and wait. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. This thing is real. This is real. Okay, I want to make it practical, so I want you to do your homework. I want you to ask God for yourself, how am I being lazy? I'm not assuming that you are. I'm just telling you what he told me, and I want maybe, just maybe, somebody in the room, there's an area where you are being lazy. I want you to think about that. I want you to write that down. God, where am I being lazy? We're doing a mastermind. God has opened up doors for us economically with the mastermind, and God said, son, can you do me a favor? I was like, what's up? He was like, son, I, I, I know you got a sweet, dope system, but I'm going to need you on these calls in the morning. They're they not you. They don't have the energy that you have. I'm going to need you on. These people paid for you to get on. I'm going to need you to get on. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I'm going to need you to get on the call, son, every day. I was like, oh, okay, cool. He's like, you're being lazy. No, 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 no. Not that I didn't put a dope system together. Not that I don't have some dope people, but God was like, no, 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 no. They're not you. I need you on in this season. I need you on. Stop being lazy. Meaning what? Stop letting some of us, our, our brand of lazy is that we have other people doing stuff for us that it's cool that they're doing it, but God wants us to be a part of it too. God said, stop being lazy. All right, stop being lazy with paperwork. Stop being lazy when it comes to the app. Stop being lazy, son. Call the app developers. You know who they are. They know who you are. They put something together. Put an app, son. If you had an app, you got 2.2 million people following you on Instagram. If you had 2.2 million people following you on an app and they was all paying a dollar, that's 2.2 million a month. Times 12. Stop being lazy. I know you like to get on the microphone. They just cut it on. You fly in. You go straight there. You speak. They give you a check. You walk out. I get it, son. That's a gift that I gave you. But I also gave you a gift where you could call these developers, son. They've been watching your videos all their life. They love you, son. They would help you develop it. But you just don't hate. You hate meetings, son. You lazy. And I gave you a break on meetings for a couple years. You just going to milk it forever? <laughs> I cut you a break on meetings, so now you just never going to meet again? How are you being lazy? I ask God, what's your brand of lazy? Write that down for me. What's your brand of lazy? Write that down right now. Like, man, God, I don't really like doing this. Man, I'm telling you all, when I saw the boxes, something moved over me, and it wasn't the Holy Spirit. I was discouraged just looking at them. And God said, what are you discouraged for, son? It's like, your, your arms move, your legs move. Like, what are you doing, son? Come on. Like, I need you to get 
as excited about this as you are about that. Don't act like excitement doesn't live inside of you. It just, you just want to be excited about what you want to be excited about. And if you're not excited about it, you don't want to stop. So here's the, this is what God gave me right here. The Bible says and the, the ant is commended for its industrious, diligently working to gather food and prepare for future without anyone forcing it or supervising it. Amen. You know the story in Proverbs. I just want to make sure we, I'm going to go here before we go there. It, the ant is commended in Proverbs. Consider the ant, oh, you slugger. Slugger, I mean, <laughs> lazy. Hey Amen. I've seen it a million times. I don't know why I didn't put it in context. Consider the ant, right? What, 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 the ant, watch this. So the industrious part, I got that. I'm good on that. Diligently working to gather food. I'm okay for that. But preparing for the future without anyone forcing or supervising. God said, you lazy, son, that when somebody you see call you and tell you to do something, it's on. If the professor tell you to do something, you know, man, I'm so embarrassed. For those of us who've gone to college, do you understand, like, how many, that's 120 hours, 40 degree to, uh, I don't know what the master's is, probably 30 to 60, PhD is another 120 hours, you got to go to class, you got to do homework, you got to turn it. God said, son, do you know when another man told you what to read and what to study and that he was going to give you a letter that you grind it, but you've never done that for yourself? It's the craziest thing. Somebody's like, I'll give you a 3.5, I'll give you a 3.0. You can walk across the stage for 10 seconds. They set us up. They know a lot of us want to be affirmed. <laughs> so they make you pay millions to get affirmed. You just walk across the stage, and they just say your name, and, you <laughs> and your parents are there. Y'all go out to eat, and everybody's like, ah. God was like, son, you got three degrees. You let these people give you a schedule. They told you what to study. They told you when to study. They told you what to bring into the class. They gave you a rubric and told you what you need to do. They gave you that for a grade, and they gave you that to walk across the stage, and you have never disciplined yourself the way another man disciplined you. I'm telling y'all, I'm like, yo, God, I've been studying Spanish forever. I ain't learned it. He said, well, because didn't nobody force you to do it. Ain't nobody force you. If, somebody, if you would have paid somebody 50 grand and they'd have made you come to school Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and they'd have gave you a grade and made you stand up in front of people and do it, you would have done it. But for whatever reason, when you studied the ant, you didn't get what I was trying to tell you. At what point is it going to flip? At what point does another human not have to force you or supervise you to make you do what you're supposed to be doing? Many of us in this room, you, you a killer, but only when somebody tell you to do it. You just can't get up on your own and go, you know what, I should probably be doing this. Somebody has to call you to do it. Now we put the emphasis on, God said, consider the ant that has no commander, no ruler. Watch this. In contrast, the sluggard or lazy person is warned about the dangers of excess sleep. Now, I'm not in the sleeping, but watch this part. In contrast, it said the lazy person is warned about the dangers of excess sleep. Idle negligence or idleness, neglecting responsibilities, the passage emphasizes that laziness can be led to poverty and scarcity. Look, there are a lot of you in this room, it's so crazy, you're going to work every day and you don't know you're about to get fired. Like, how do you not know you're about to get fired? How did you not know AI was going to replace you? People call me all the time, AI is the worst thing ever happened. I say, yeah, if you lazy, it is. AI ain't about to take my spot. You can't, AI can't get on, he ain't about to get on stage. You ain't about to smile and hug nobody. Like, you ain't, you ain't about to, I'm okay. Like, you're not about to take my spot. I'm okay. But for some of us, you mad, you, you mad, but AI hey, like, oh, I can do that real quick. I'm just going to say this. I had a young lady um, coach, a writing coach. I'd never need her again. And I love her. But AI hey, not just, bop. <laughs> I want 12 chapters. <laughs> 12 chapters. I wanted to say, brrr. <laughs> So I'm saying if you're in that business, you're going to have to find a way to do something that wasn't doing. Listen to me. Can I be honest? I understand how we feel about AI. Somebody said it earlier this morning. I get it. I understand it. But do you know AI was created because humans was being lazy? You know how many people called off sick and AI, they was like, we need to create something that ain't going to call off sick. You know how many people called off sick in the morning just before your shift? 
And they was like, man, we got to. You know how many people came to work and clocked out while they was there? They clocked in. You just wanted to check. You ain't even do your work. You're mad at AI, but we created it with our laziness. The supervisor couldn't count on us. The company couldn't count on us. They weren't making money, so they wanted to create something that didn't get sick as much as we do. (laughs) I'm not even talking about real sick. I'm talking about you didn't want to go to work sick. That's sick. (laughs) Watch this. It can lead to poverty and scarcity, highlighting the importance of being proactive, hardworking, and responsible. The two that hit me, proactive. There's some stuff I did this year that God has blessed us economically, and I'm, I'm able to do what I should have probably been doing for a long period of time. But I, 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 I got to be honest and say it didn't even happen because I was being proactive. It happened because we hadn't been doing what God had called me, and out of a need, out of necessity, I pick my brain. It was like, God, help me. And then it came forth. God said, you could have been doing that, but you just, for whatever reason, it's got to be fourth quarter, uh, two minutes left, down by 12, and now you like, let's go. God was like, where was this in the second quarter? Where was all of this in the first quarter? Why you got to wait to the end? I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to myself. God said, son, we're in a world where economics is important, and I have more money for you to get so that I can bless more people, but you being lazy. Can I, can, can, look, okay, let's go here, and then we go. I was in the store, and I just, I'm a people person, so I noticed this young lady was going through it, whatever. You know, she had $5 trying to do some stuff with her kids. And I was like, man, sit down and have a meal. Listen to me very closely. When I said sit down and have a meal, I just remember a time in my life where I wasn't handling my business. Can I say this? And I'm not saying this to y'all. I'm just saying this to me. I have no new gifts. You know what I love about God? And, and I, what I love most about God is when I was born, God already knew what I would, this dumb stuff, I would be on stuff, not finishing school, home. And God knew all of that. And he still gave me all these gifts. Here's what I mean by that. We, we serve a God that if he wanted to, after you got baptized and you got seared, then he could put all his gifts on you. Oh, you missed what I just said. We serve, oh, come on, I'm just so excited. Maybe I'm by myself. But we serve a God who could hold on to all of his good stuff for you until you got your life right. And then once you got your life right, he just started passing them out according to your responsibility level. We serve a God that when I was born and I, would, I didn't even know God, we wasn't even praying at the crib. We wasn't necessarily going to church like that. God still gave me all of this stuff. And he never took it from me, even though I wasn't praying and I wasn't going to church. He gave it to me and let me start working on it. And then as I got older, boom, and I start, God's like, now, son, I gave it to you. You're going to have to activate it, though. All these gifts that I have, God gave them to me a long time ago. And I'm so grateful that as I get older and more mature, God is like, son, use this one and use that one and use this one for me. You did not get degrees for you. You got them for me. I'm doing certain things. And so when we walk in, I'm so grateful that I was at a point in my life where the character of God is growing because when I went to Waffle House the first time and nobody, I told y'all, it's a different speed in the South. You grew up in the north and you go down south. I'm not saying hospitality ain't real. Southern hospitality is real, but it's slow. I walk in the restaurant. I'm in there for about 15, and nobody sees me or say nothing to me. I'm like, ma'am, she likes, I see you, hold on. I am like, well, if you saw me before I said something to you, why you never saw, why didn't you say something to me? And so I could tell she had a little attitude, so I walked out. But I knew I had to go back because Didi said she wanted breakfast. <laughs> you know how sometimes you get in your feelings, but do you remember the principle? Diddy was like, I want breakfast. I was like, shoot, you want breakfast at 10.59. Ah, Waffle House, they got it 24 hours. Came back, was like, Didi, I can't, I couldn't do it, but if we're going to eat, we're just going to have to go back and sit down. We sat down as I saw the lady as we were leaving. I'm so grateful that I'm finally in a, in a halfway place where God wanted me to be, where I was asked, I, I didn't have to count the lady and her kids. Yeah, I'm talking to myself right now. I'm talking to myself right now. I didn't have to count. She got seven. Let me go get the menu. Okay, it's like it's seven dollars. Okay, twenty dollars. Okay, so they do. Okay, they can't get nothing to drink. <laughs> I could pay for them to eat, but they can't get a beverage. 
I'm so grateful that I'm at a place where it's like, it does not matter how many people there are, how much money it is. It doesn't matter. I've finally done what God has asked me to do and we got it. And then I was able to give her a name. I said, do me a favor. Like, we got to make it real. The Good Samaritan is not a story in the Bible for us to go, oh, that's a beautiful story. We ought to be in a position financially to do what the Good Samaritan did. He said, whatever he needs, just put it on my tab. Okay, let me say it like this way so y'all don't get confused. That, that's, that. It's not a Bible story. It's real. He said, put it on my tab, which means what? He had enough money, and they knew he had enough money to do it. So Didi said, give him something to go. Make sure they got something to go. Listen to me very closely. I gave her a name, Danita's name. I said, Danita, whatever, just take care of it for me, but take care of it, meaning don't take care of it and lead them in the state they're in because that's not what God wants, saints. When I went to Detroit seven, uh, Center, Seventh-day Adventist Church, Pastor Willis didn't leave me in the state that I was in. The cannoneers specifically said to me, you cannot come stay with us to stay with us. You only come to stay with us to go to school. When school starts, if you ain't in school, you homeless again. It wasn't a charity strike. It was a developmental progression strike. They're like, you either go to Oakwood or you get out of here, but you're not about to stay here and eat our food for the next year, two, three years. Like, you're not about to be a dependent but you're going to go to school. And I went to school and the rest is history. They put me in a situation. So Danita got her home under the condition, you're here for a week, you get a job by the second week. And not only does she have a place to stay with her kids, they gave her food for a week, but she's working at the Atlanta airport right now and ain't nobody got to do nothing for her because now she got a check on her own. You're not hearing what I'm saying, but, but we can't activate it if we can't activate it. Next picture, go, I just want y'all to see the next picture we now have. Go to the one after this one, because that one won't make sense. The kids in the newspaper, his parents get to see it. But, but because of the economics that God has blessed us with, now we got our own foundation basketball team, and they traveling all over the world, y'all. Now, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, God didn't give you a degree just for you. God didn't give you a gift just for you. I know you want to retire, but you just don't get to decide that's what you want to do. Does that make sense? Let's go back to the Word. We're going to get out of here. Let's go. Let's go back to the Word. Amen. Praise God. I just want you to ask the question, God, how am I being lazy? How am I being lazy, God? I'm using this one talent or this other talent. I'm using two. I know I got more. Lord, show me how to use them, God, please. Watch this. Take the lesson from the ant, you lazy bones. Learn their ways and become wise. Though they have no prince or governor. I'm just being real. Some of us, you're not lazy if you wait waiting on, like, if somebody give you instructions, you're good. But if they don't give you the instructions, you lost. The Bible specifically says the ant. Why am I saying the ant? Because the ant does not have to wait on anybody else to do what it's supposed to. It never said the bumblebee. It never said the lion kingdom because they're waiting. He said the ant. The ant is specifically in the Bible. The ant is specifically being referred to in Proverbs. The ant, why? Because the ant does not need another person to help it do what it's supposed to be doing. The ant just wake up and go, what am I supposed to be doing today? I don't need no other ant to tell me. Oh, come on, somebody talk back to me. I don't need another ant to tell me what I'm supposed to be doing. I ain't got to sit here and call another ant. Hey, ants, what are we doing today? It's something inside the ant that knows what it's supposed to be doing, and it goes to do it. I said to somebody the other day, man, would, the church would be phenomenal if each one of us with a gift would use our gift, and we come back to the church with the gifts. But the problem is many of us are coming to the church for, for with needing something, and it stressed the church out when we should come with something and then go take it out to those that need it. We got, as, we got as many needy folks in the church as we do outside the church. Oh, you missed what I just said. You missed what I said. All the all church members should be economically wise because the word tells us how to do it. He gave us gifts. Man, I should have sent y'all this picture. I sent a picture. I showed my wife this picture this morning. I ain't never asked Didi. I ain't never done this before. I showed Didi a picture this morning. I was like, ah, let's go. I saw a picture of an event that I'm doing in Utah, and it had Gary V, it had Aunt Milet, 
It had Dean Gracioso. It had, bro, I'm talking about, it had the top speakers in the world. And I said, Didi, look what God did. When you found me, I was a high school dropout, homeless, sleeping in the band and building. I'm the number one motivational speaker in the world now. I took the gift that God gave me and I did something with it. Some of you, God gave you a gift. You still waiting on God to stir it. <laughs> Peter says, stir up the gift. It's in the word. Stir it up. Some of us got the gift. We like, God, when, come on, when you going to stir it? He said, I put all the ingredients in. I got to stir it too? No, I'm telling you, I'm going to say this again because I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't do this a lot. But this is necessary sometime to do it. I looked at the picture and I couldn't believe it myself. And then I looked at where I was positioned. I was like, oh, they got your boy up front. <laughs> they ain't got your boy small in the back. Why? Because they want some people to come because I'm on it. I said, God, thank you for giving me the gift. And then thank you for me finally realizing that it ain't going to activate itself. I got to go to get the four year and I hate school. I got to get the master's and I hate school. I got to get the PhD and I hate school. But I got to activate the gift at all costs. I can't leave the gift to God to... I'm talking, I'm going to say it slow. I can't leave everything to God. Some stuff I got to do as a human. All right, all right, we're going to hurry up. I'm sorry, just give me a little bit more time. Take the, take the Bible says, take the lesson from the ant. You lazy bones, this is the Bible. I didn't, I'm not calling nobody that. I'm just, this is what the Bible says, amen. I don't believe God would cause us, la- I don't think God would have called me lazy this week to, uh, to offend me. I think he called me lazy this week to stretch me. God said you should be making way more money. <laughs> hey Amen. Listen to me very closely. This property is worth $2.8 billion. Million. This, this property, I keep saying that word. I got you, God. Yeah, I got you. It's just in me. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm past millions now. I just, billions is on my tongue. I apologize. This property is worth, we, 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 we probably have over $400 million of assets. Hmm? We left a church, and God said, son, do this, do this, do that. Listen to me. We ain't broke, y'all. And God spoke to me and said, boy, that money should have been. The, remember that post I put up with the Latter-day Saints? They have over $100 billion in assets. And I show, it showed how they put money into this and that. And so we just did our first investment as a body, and then Trap called me and was like, E, y'all need to do this. I'm like, got you, Trap, got you. God says, son, take what I've given y'all and then take it to another level, and then that money should be used. You shouldn't be having to call on nobody but me. Okay, I'm going to say it one more time. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Though they have no prince or governor or ruler to make them work, why we weren't preaching this in church? Why we just doing the doctrine? Say 27. Why we wasn't on this? This should have been 28. Go to work. Don't be lazy. Every gift that God has given you, activate it. Not just for you, for others. It's okay that you can pay for your kids to go to school. Now it's time to pay for somebody else's. It's okay for you to buy a house. Now I want to put you in a position to help other people and not buy them some so they could be relying on you every month. I love it. CJ used to tell me a long time ago, you can't fix money problems with money. It takes a stream of income. You got to give somebody 10000 a day, you probably going to have to give it to them tomorrow too. How oh, you miss what I just said? Somebody asking you for money today, the worst thing you can do is just give them money. The best thing you can do is create a stream of income, something that they can do where they can bring in money on their own regularly. And how do I know we could do it? Because we could do all things through Christ to strengthen us. Watch what he says. They labor hard all summer. This is the ant. Give me a couple minutes. They labor hard all summer. It didn't say all year. It said all summer. They're smart. They're strategic. God says you can do more with an app, son. Look at how many people follow you. You can do more with an app than you can do on stage. Get off the stage. I know you like the stage. But that season is done. 
You've gotten what you're supposed to get from that season. Now I need you to do the app. I need you to do the app. And I'm telling y'all I'm so hurt because I should have done the app when God told me to do the app. Why? Because we're in a season right now where they're on a strike and ain't nothing, ain't no new content being produced right now in entertainment. If I had my app and the content out now, they'd be rushing to it. Why? Because there's nothing but reruns on TV. It's a season. God has opened up the windows of heaven. He's pouring out the window. He opened up the window. The Hollywood is on strike right now. All of y'all that's talking about all the bad stuff that's coming out of Hollywood, guess what? Hollywood ain't producing no more, and so are Christians. <laughs> I love it. We dogging them out. Are they feeding us, feeding us garbage? But we don't have no garden. <laughs> I love it. We talk about it. Are they feeding our kids garbage? Well, we taking them to go get it. We don't got our own restaurant. Come on, somebody talk back to me today. I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to just be, I'm going to be blatant. God said, you lazy. If they got crazy food, then why aren't y'all producing food? If they got grocery stores, why are you dogging their out and you don't have your own? Because you're not an ant. The ant ain't tripping on what nobody else is doing. The ant getting up doing what the ant's supposed to do. I just believe it's enough talent in this place. I just believe it's enough good people in this place. I just believe we ain't got to wait on other people to get what... They labor hard all summer. They gather food for the winter. But you, lazy bone, I wonder who this is speaking. Is this God? I know it's from the Bible. Who are we talking to? <laughs> but you, Eric Thomas, lazy bone, how long will you sleep? Not physically. How long are you going to sleep on the internet? How long are you going to let Instagram be your platform? How long are you going to let Facebook be your platform? You lazy. Because all you got to do is put your content up on there and boom, and watch 300,000 or 400,000. You sleep, son. When are you going to get your own? Well, that must, that's going to take a little bit more work than uploading. And I must be honest. I don't even know the last time I uploaded a video. Lazy. No, no, I got threads. We got over 200,000 people on threads. God got on me the other day about it. I saw somebody post my stuff on thread, and God was like, son, you got 200,000 people on thread. You don't even know what the, you don't, wouldn't even know how to get on thread. You don't even know where to find your own stuff. Oh, you lazy. I'm not telling you to do it, but at least know it. You that lazy that somebody created it, and you don't even know where to go. Like, I wouldn't even know how to go to threads. When will you wake up, he said to me. Let's go to the last one. Oh, ye little, little extra sleep, <laughs> a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and boom, <laughs> then poverty pounce on you like a bandit. Suddenly, <laughs> quick, soon. I'm just saying, like our bank accounts are a direct reflection of how we've been working. Not praying, your prayers is dope. May, like if it has something to do with your prayer, you might be a billionaire, but it doesn't. You can't pray money into your account, but God has given you gifts that you can work and not just the ones you want to work. God says the nonprofit, do y'all know how much money goes back to the government every year in nonprofit money? Millions upon millions, if not billions. Why? Because people don't fill out the paperwork. But you know what's crazy when it came to the PPP loan? People fill out paperwork that ain't even supposed to be put filled out. <laughs> Lazy, because they done found a hustle. Lazy. It's, listen to me. This is what I'm trying to tell you. It's, I want you to understand what I'm trying to tell you. The reason why people fill out the PPP is because somebody said it's money in the PPP. It's more money in nonprofit than it is in the PPP. But because we lazy, we waiting for somebody to tell us where the hookup is. It's more money in nonprofit than it is in the PPP, and the, and the nonprofit is yours. It belongs to you. You ain't even got to get in trouble for it. Somebody look that up for me real quick. <laughs> Go on your time. How much money is going back every year to the government because we don't use it in the nonprofit sector? Somebody look that up for me while I finish. God beating me down. Scarcity will attack you like an armed robber. Just scream it out when you get it for us. I just want to see how much money is going back every year because we lazy and we don't want to fill out the, and we don't want to, but we want to find the sources and everybody want to pounce on the same source. 
We see one source of income. We all PPP. We go go ah, PPP. While Trump is like, all right, seven dollars, seventy-five dollars for taxes. I'm like, what? Seventy-five? What did he? He paid like seventy-five dollars or seven hundred fifty dollars, something crazy. I'm like, what? Uh oh, I'm sorry. What's the number that go back? One point four nine. Six to ten billion go back unclaimed every year, and we PPP. <laughs> Why? Because somebody told us that, and we're too lazy to do some research. They, it's six to ten bill going back in nonprofit. This program, you can. <laughs> I'm just saying, let's stop being lazy. All right, here go the homework. Let's get out of here. All right, I finally see why I'm broke. <laughs> I see now, God. I've been lazy. So number one, let's make it practical. Ask God, how am I being lazy? Mine's is paperwork. If you don't supervise me, I, ha I have a hard time when I just got to come up with it on my own, and I don't have two, three other people to, uh, you know, to get energy off of, right? Unsupervised, right? How are you being lazy? Come on, this is it. I promise. No more. How are you being lazy? How you being lazy? Number two, good. In what areas am I being lazy? All right, nonprofit sector, I'm being lazy. Even in, the, even, even in the space of having an app, being lazy. Consulting, being lazy. I, I know where I'm being lazy. I ain't crazy. I know where I'm being lazy. Number three, God, how do you want me to correct? How do you want me to correct it? I want you to ask God that now or when you leave, how do you want me to correct this, Father? I need to correct this. I'm being lazy. How do you want me to correct this? God told me, I want you to spend a half hour a day, son, on looking what's available. If the app, I want you to meet with the app person. I got myself, my son, Moose. We weekly meet, and Nikki's doing some stuff to show him the format. God's like, let's go, son, because as soon as you put the app out, I'm going to be able to bless y'all. I can't bless y'all without, I can't, you're sending all your traffic to, because they were diligent enough to put a vehicle together, and you just keep using a vehicle. Huh? How do you want me to correct it, Father? I want, you, I want you on these calls with your mastermind. I want you to call, I want individual calls. I want to make sure they're good. I want you on. Can I be honest? God's like, bro, you can't. You got some phenomenal people on, but they paid for you to be on. You got to be on too. You, they doing their part. You got to do your part. Lazy. Oh, I, Lord, I just whether I know they sweet, they dope, they got it. He like, they do. <laughs> but they ain't got your part. Like you can't do their part. You can't, they can't do your part. Go do your part. I'm like, but if I did, I'm, I'm work, okay, stop working out from 6 to 6, 30, 6 to 7. Stop working out. Work out earlier, work out afterwards. Stop working. But I want to be in there. Who cares what you want to be? Who cares what you want to do? This is what I need you to do. How do you want me to correct it? I want y'all to ask God, how do you want me to correct it? Not how do you want me to correct them or her or they or she. Or it. How do you want me to correct? How do you want me to correct me, Father? Show, show those pictures again. I want to show those pictures again. Super excited. Yep. I want to show those. Can we show those pics? I see the one young lady right here. Yep. 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 I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm not excited about helping her. I'm excited that she's helping herself now. I'm excited she got a job now. She can wake up like she don't got to call us and rely on us no more. That's not the goal. I'm not Wells Fargo. I'm not a bank. Now she go... And I'm telling you, if you're at the airport in Atlanta, <laughs> there's some room for growth. And I, I look forward to seeing, I, I, now her babies get to see mama go get dressed in her Delta outfit and go to work. Now they get to see, oh, this is what we need to be doing. Hey, Amen. And I don't know if y'all noticed the picture because it's kind of, you can see a little bit more on here. But I'm grateful for Danita, more grateful for her sister that got the nonprofit boy going and God, look how clean the house look, y'all. For real, look how clean. You, I want to come home. This is like some DD stuff. 
My basement don't look like, you know what I'm saying? Like my spot where Didi let me have. It don't even look like it was today because I had to clean it yesterday. But my junk, like, they come into something clean and beautiful. And now she get to pay her own rent next month. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. We, I'm out. Look at the, look at the, oh, okay, you can't. Jamie, is there a way? Because some kind of way is so big, you can't see that this is on the front of a, of a cover of a paper. It says, more mint and recruit spring showcase standouts. So this kid, apparently, because he got an opportunity with us, he's going to these tournaments. Now, these, this kid is considered to be a standout, right? Now, his mama could say, he, you know, daddy could say, his church family, his school, he's on the front cover of this particular basketball. Come on, y'all, we got work to do. We got work to do, y'all. And it doesn't start with prosperity, because that's money. It starts with wealth, and wealth is the total package. And so you're in the room right now, you're watching right now, and you're like, yep, God, yep, I'm, I'm, I am. You've given me gifts, and I'm using some of them, but I'm not using all of them. And it's time for me to use more of my gifts and more of my talent, not just for me and mine, but for you and yours. If that's you and you're ready to make that commitment to either take your, like, just to be more ant-like, <laughs> you're standing right now. God, I want to be more ant-like. I don't want to be, I, I, this person didn't do it, so I'm not doing it. They ain't show up, so I'm not showing up. No, this person did their part. Hey man, we had BBS, it was fire. Everybody did their part. And then there were parts that each one of us individually had to play. Hey Amen, praise God. And because each individual played their part, hallelujah, we were able to have a phenomenal event. Is that all right? Come on, is that all right? Amen. And you know what? I'm going to be honest. I went to Camille afterwards and was like, Camille, I ain't trying to be funny. I know you got a life and you got a schedule, but I don't think Vacation Bible School should just be like, why we got to wait until the summer to do it? Like, we need to be doing this regularly, like once a quarter. Like, what are we doing that we can't invite people to? I'm looking at all these parents here sending their kids to camps. Why we don't have a camp? Why are we sending everybody, why are we sending our kids to camp? Why aren't we creating a camp? Shh, lazy. It's easier to send them and take them than it is to. So you're making a commitment, God, I don't want to be lazy no more. Amen. I don't want to be lazy anymore. If I, do me a favor. Can we move this right here? I'm going to ask a couple giants. You know you're a giant in Christ. You know you have gifts. You've been doing stuff you ain't got no business doing, relationships, drinking, smoking. I don't know what you on, idol. You, you just haven't been on what God will have you to be on, but you know you are a leader for Christ. I'm just going to ask you to come forward and just say, God, I'm done playing. I'm done playing. I'm done wasting time. And as a leader, you can count on me from now on to be an ant and get busy. Amen. Where are you? Come on. Where are you? My leaders. <laughs> My leaders. Stop playing. I'm ready, God. I know I, I know I could be doing more. I know I could be doing more. I'm a leader. I could be doing more. And I'm ready to be like the ant. I ain't waiting on no institution to call me and tell me to come. Come on, can y'all scoot over? There's more people coming. I don't know what's happening on, on the right here. But, hallelujah. Praise God. You're a leader. We're about to pray. You're a leader. It's like, come on, I gotta, it's time for me to do more. I'm gonna wake up every day and like the ant, ask God. Praise God. I ain't waiting on nobody. God gave me the gifts. So I'm going to go back to the person that gave me the gifts and say, what you want me to do today? And then we're going to make it happen. Amen? Amen. We're also going to pray for our uh, pop-up shop. Praise God. August 24th, we're going to Sexton High School. It's about to be big. We're about to love on some folks. And guess what? Some of those folks are going to come back here because they're going to go, whoa, God blessing y'all like that. Whoa, I need to get some of them blessings. And we're going to be ready for them. Praise God. Some of you standing right here are going to be waiting for them with your arms stretched wide. I'm from Lansing. I grew up in Lansing. I went to school in Lansing. I want to be a blessing to Lansing. You ready? Or I came to Lansing and got blessed coming to Lansing. And now I want to be a blessing to Lansing. And so August 24th, Father, we come now and just say thank you for your patience. Thank you for even sharing with me and with us that we lazy. Thank you. Thank you for leaving the word in Proverbs. Thank you for the story of the ant. And we ready now, Lord, we ready.
We ready to be proactive. We ready to prepare. We ready, Lord. There's a garden waiting on us to do. There's a store waiting on us to build. Come on, come on. There's an industry waiting on us to create. There are individuals waiting on us to help them to get to the next level. They've been at one level for too long, Lord. And we are going to help them because we've been on, we was on a level too long. And we're going to show them how you changed us. Forgive us for our sins and our shortcomings, Lord. May today be a phenomenal beginning. May today be a day we can look back at and say, man, I remember I went up there and I told God, I'm ready to take it to the next level. I'm ready to just stop making money. I'm ready to stop just making money to pay my bills. I'm ready to start making purpose. I'm ready to step in my calling. I'm ready to do what you call me to do, Father. I don't want to just make pay bills no more. I don't want to just make ends meet no more. I don't want to just be settled no more, Lord. I'm ready to do your will and do your work. I'm not judging nobody else no more. I'm not criticizing no more. I'm about to start producing. I'm not about to talk about what the grocery stores ain't doing, what the food industry ain't doing. I'm not doing that no more. I'm about to create. I see a gap. I'm about to allow you to help me to fill that gap. So, Lord, we thank you at a place of change, Lord. There's so many churches, Lord, and you've shown favor on us. Thank you, Father. You've blessed us, Lord. Thank you, Father. And now we're ready to return the blessing, Lord. We're ready to deposit in our well done, thou good and faithful servant account. We want to we want to we want to pour into that account, Lord. We're giving our a, a, a landlord his money. We're giving a mortgage company their money. Now we want to start depositing into the well done, thou good and faithful servant account. We want to wake up every day and go, God. We want to put something in your account. We want to say thank you to you. We want to give back to you. We want to make sure today that you can look at us and say, man, you, you, okay, okay, you looking out for me, you looking out for mine, you looking out for you, you looking out for, thank you. And so if you can't count on no other human to be concerned about what's concerning to you, Lord, you can count on us. Forgive us for our sins and our shortcomings. Bless us, Father. Have mercy upon us. And may others be blessed because of our existence. Every gift that we have, we will no longer hold on to it. We're about to give it back in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you so much for joining us this week. For those who've expressed an interest in supporting our ministry, please use our cash app, dollar sign, a place of change, APOC, for your donations and tithes. If you prefer more traditional options, please visit our website at www.apocministry.com. Org, where you can make your donation via PayPal, credit card, or certified check or money order. We look forward to seeing all of you for our midweek service Wednesday evenings at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Pastor T.J. Tyus. On behalf of our pastors and their families and your APOC family, we wish you all a very blessed week.